Uh, well, welcome this morning. Good morning, uh, New Life. My name is Norman. For those of you online uh, who don't know me, I think I know everybody in the room here, so good morning. Great to be with you guys. <laughs> I am excited. Yes, good to see you too, uh, Malachi. I love you, man. Uh, it's good to be with you guys here today. At New Life, we exist uh, to love God, love people, and make disciples. We do want to see everyone to come to know Jesus and experience this new life that he has for us. And in order for that to happen, it will take all of us living this mission out, loving God, loving people, making disciples in every aspect, every context of our life where we live, work, and play. So that is, that is our mission. That's why we exist. And in order to help us do that, we are in a series right now, a little short series on prayer, fasting, and worship. And last week, uh, we had the, the amazing, uh, some amazing moments in here where God was just moving and speaking to us, and we engaged in some prayer and really encouraged that, man, God loves us, and he wants to be with us. And that's really the, 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 the piece of prayer that I think matters the most, right, is to commune with God, to be closer to God. So it was just a great, a great time to do that uh, last week and, and learn and, and just experience that together. And, and then this week, we're going to be talking about one of my favorite subjects, not Fasting, because I love food, right? So really, I mean, when I think about fasting, what is fasting? Uh, is it like a, just a way to be super spiritual, right? Like, hey, I, I fast, I'm cool, you know, I, I, I do the thing. Maybe for some people it's a way to maybe just lose some inches. Like, I'm going to fast, yeah, I'm going I'm to fast and lose some inches, you know what I mean? But, and, and those things may be true, but, but really, uh, you know, I want to encourage us what, what Scripture helps us uh, to understand what fasting really is today. And, you know, I wanted to share this really quick. I had... I was really encouraged by a family member here. I want you guys to know that I think of us as family. Uh, we have grown together, together as a family, a lot. I've been here in this church since we planted on the South Hill three, some, about three years ago, I think, maybe four years ago. It's, wow, been four years. Oh, boy. Okay. Uh, COVID, I just erased that year. Okay. Uh, so about four years now, and I've been part of the plant here at New Life since we planted a year ago, right? Six months ago, seven months ago, something like that. Okay, my dates are way off. Never mind that. But since we planted here. And in that time, it's been amazing to just be with you guys. Now, we don't just come on Sundays, right, and, 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 and hear a word. Uh, we, we spend time together. We grow together. We encourage one another. We eat food, which is why I'm not all that excited to talk about fasting. And also, just, I've, we've, I've seen God work in everybody's lives and growth, but also miraculous miracles. I've seen God work in people and through people. So when I say this a message today, I want you to know that I had a friend in the family that told me, hey, wouldn't it be awesome if we all brought something every Sunday to give to one another? And, and what, what she meant by that is we came already received from God. And we have something to give. So understand, although my role may be a little bit different than some in this room, I just am excited to share something that God has birthed in my heart with you today. So understand that's where I'm coming from. Love you guys a ton. So um, I want you guys to, to turn in your Bibles or your Bible apps to uh, Matthew 6. We're going to be in verses 16 through 18. We're going to be in this scripture to start, and then I'm going to breeze through a couple of others. And my goal here is to help us see the evidence that the Bible shows where fasting uh, is used, perhaps, or is a tool that is used to glorify God and bring us closer to him. And so we're going to go through those. So again, Matthew 6 is where we're going to start in verses 16 through 18. And if you don't have an app or a Bible with you, it should be up on the screen. Um, it reads this, it says, uh, And when you fast, do not make it obvious as the hypocrites do, for they try to look miserable and deceived, so people will admire them for their fasting. I tell you the truth, that is the only reward they will ever get. But when you fast, comb your hair, like mine, and wash your face, that no one will notice that you're fasting, except your father, who knows what you do in private, and your father, who sees everything, will reward you. Now, notice in that first part there that Jesus says, not if you fast, but when you fast. He's basically setting the, 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 the bar at like following me or having a relationship with me. Is, it's, it's fasting is, is something that you do. It's not something that you might do, right? So uh, when I think about that and I, I look at that, um, it's, it's for those people who are trying to follow Jesus. Obviously, they don't have it perfected because I'm one of them. But it's, it's a requirement, and um, it, 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 what it does for us is it helps our relationship and, and what he designed it to help us go closer to him and also to, uh, uh, to help us experience the power that he has, which we're going to unpack here. Um, in our culture, as, as you guys 
probably know, it's not like a normal routine for us to fast. It's not something that normal people do in the American culture, right? So if someone just comes up to me and says, Norman, hey, what are you fasting this week? I'm going to be kind of thrown off because it's not something I generally practice. In our culture, it's not really taught that often. Uh, but when, notice when he makes this sta- statement again, he says, when you fast. Um, you know, he knows Jesus and people, Jesus knows that people in his culture, it's something that they do. So he speaks of it in, in, in a conversation with them because he knows that they fast. He knows it's part of their culture. It's what they do. It's something they practice. But I, I want us to, to, to focus on one thing really quick around this scripture, that there's, there's also uh, a reality that for some of the reasons that people would fast, they weren't the intentions that he gave them for fasting. Or, or in other words, they didn't fast for the right reasons. Notice again in the scripture, it says, uh, when you fast, don't make it obvious as the hypocrites do, for they look miserable and disabled so people will admire them for their fasting. I tell you the truth, that the only reward they will even, will, excuse me, that is the only reward that they will get. But when you fast, comb your hair, wash your face, that no one will notice that you're fasting except for your father. He knows what you do in private and your father who sees everything where it will uh, will reward you. Uh, now, there's always exceptions to the rule, but I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that for us in our culture, it's not that we uh, uh, fast for the wrong reasons, but it's, it's that we actually don't fast often, right? So, so in other words, I'm not saying that when we fast, sometimes we don't fast for the wrong reasons, but really our bigger problem is that we just don't practice it enough as we should or really as needed to experience God in his fullness, so uh, what I wanted to uh, encourage us today, though, is that God has given us a tool. He's given us a tool. Fasting is a tool to draw us closer to him and to do the extraordinary through us. That's what he wants to do. So I'm going to give a, briefly just a couple, really quick here, just a couple of um, uh, examples in Scripture. Now, I'm not going to go into any context on these four Scriptures. I'm just going to give you examples of different ways that fasting was used in the Old Testament, uh, one in the New as well, uh, of People, when people used fasting to, to actually advance God's kingdom. So we're going to start, uh, they're going to be briefly, I, I encourage you to uh, uh, maybe jot the verses down. Please uh, jump into them on your own time and, and kind of peel back the layers of, of more descriptiveness of what happened when these people did fasting in these scriptures and what they used it for, uh, what they were called to do when they did it. Uh, but for, for just for this purpose, I'm just going to show uh, different ways that God has moved through fasting. Okay, so we're going to be really quick. Number one is fasting strengthens our prayer. In Ezra 8.23, it says, So we fasted and earnestly prayed that our God would take care of us, and he heard our prayers. So you see, fasting there strengthens your prayer. Number two, seek God's guidance. Fasting helps us to seek God's guidance. In Judges 20, 20 through 20, or excuse me, verse 26, it says, Then all of the Israelites went up to Bethel and wept in the presence of the Lord and fasted until evening. They also brought burnt offerings and peace offerings to the Lord. So you can see there that they fasted to seek God's guidance. Fasting helps us to express repentance. We can use it as a tool to help us express repentance. Here in 1 Samuel 7, verse 6, it says, So they gathered at Mizpah and in great ceremony drew water from a well and poured it out before the Lord. They also went without food all day and confessed that they had sinned against the Lord. So there, it, it, they, they used fasting as a tool to help express their great repentance towards the Lord. And then and lastly, there's power in fasting. There is mighty power in fasting. Shown in Mark 9, 28 verses, or excuse me, 9 verses 28 through 29. Starts out saying, Afterward, when Jesus was alone in the house with his disciples, they asked him, Why couldn't we cast out that evil spirit? Jesus replied, this kind can only be cast out by prayer and fasting. Now you'll notice if you're reading from your own Bible or an app, maybe even on the screen, um, it it, it doesn't read fasting. But in a lot of manuscripts, the the word fasting was there. So in some manuscripts it wasn't, some was there. So prayer and fasting holds power. Now I'm going to tell you one really quick story. It's in the book of Esther, and I just want, the reason I want to show this or tell this story is because um, it's, it really shows what happens when people resort to fasting as like a first resort. So a lot of you may have read the book of Esther. A lot of you maybe have seen cartoons or movies on the book of Esther. And really, it's a miraculous story of God moving in a way to save his people using different people and using their different methods that they resorted to through those people. 
I'm not going to go into most of the details. So again, I encourage you to read it. It's an amazing story. But I do want to say that there was a queen, obviously named Esther. That's what the story, who the, the main character is in, in the story. And a king. And the king was, was going to allow her nation to be wiped out simply because the king had a servant who didn't like Jewish people. Because there was one Jewish man who was bent on not worshiping his servant, the king's servant. And that king's servant was very upset with this man. But this man would not bow to anyone but his Lord God. He had a hard enough time obeying the king's wishes because he knew who his God was. And so in the midst of this story, there is a big scheme to d- destroy all the Jews through the, servant, the king's servant. And the amazing thing was, is the people immediately, when they found out, clothed themselves with ash and sackcloth. And you know what they did next? They began to fast and pray because they knew they were in dire straits. They knew that if if God didn't make a move, if God didn't do something, they were going to die. And you see, the story kind of culminates at the end with with Esther. We go back to Esther now, and she has to enter the king's throne in order to have him pardon this this thing that was already set up and going to happen, this this annihilation of the Jewish people. But the problem is, is you can't just go before the king. (laughs) It's not something you do. So sometimes I'll be uh, in my room with my headset on playing video games and my wife will barge in and I'm in an intense moment. And I will be like, "Ah, not right now. And I'm like, if I was king, I would off you right now because this this is not, you know, I am intense. You wait, knock on the door, slide a note underneath the door or something, right? So Esther, the the only way you could enter the king's courts is, is if he pardoned you by, if you interrupted him and it wasn't an appointment, it wasn't something that you were supposed to do, you weren't supposed to be there. The only way you would be pardoned by interrupting his affairs, whatever it was, even if you were queen, he didn't care, was if he lowered his scepter towards you. And if you lowered a scepter to you, everybody was, okay, we're okay. This person's not going to be killed right now because the king had a reputation to hold. He's king. You don't interrupt the king, right? So anyway, this, Esther's, Esther has this situation that she's in. She's got to approach the king, but she knows she hasn't seen him in 30 days. The king has not asked her to enter his presence. So how am I going to enter the presence of the king in this time? So what happens is Esther does the smart thing in this moment. She sends back word that all the Jewish people in the town, I want you to fast and pray for three days. And the miraculous thing about the story is after this three-day period, she enters the throne room of the king. And you know what's amazing about this? Is the heart of the king, it says in the scripture, his heart was softened and he was filled with just joy to see Esther. Like he was glad she was there and he gladly lowered a scepter. And his heart was in this posture of, hey, there's my beautiful queen which was not always the case, usually not the case. You never approach the king that way. So for the king to lower his scepter like that was a miracle. They had prayed and fasted. They had spent time before the Lord pleading to him, crying out to him, God, unless you make a move here, we are toast, we are done. There's nothing we can do in of ourselves. Lord, we need you. Please do something. They pleaded their hearts out day and night, skipping meals, praying and crying out to God. They knew it was the only way and God moved powerfully in that story. I find it amazing and all these other scriptures too, there's so much evidence in scripture. This is like the tip of the iceberg of evidence in scripture of where fasting and prayer works where God moves miraculously through people's connection to God on a deeper level. They're, they're, they're yearning for him. They're yearning for a moving of him, and he moves powerfully. So that's the first thing I wanted to do was just show some evidence in Scripture. Hey, guys, fasting is real. Prayer is real. It works. God moves. I could probably stand up here for another half hour, but I won't, telling miraculous stories of when prayer and fasting has moved in my life, and it's amazing. But I'll save that for another time. There's so much evidence, and I want us to be encouraged in so many ways. Again, I think of us as a family. I think of us as people who encourage one another. So uh, I I want want us to look at this as not so much like me teaching from a spot of like, I am really good at this. I know what I'm doing. I want to encourage us because as I prep for this message, I have been convicted and encouraged. And it brings me to uh, a, a truth that I want to ask us, a question I want to ask us today that I want to really hang the rest of this on. And it, 
it's the question that's, that's asked, am I starving for God's attention? Am I starving for God's attention? See, I believe, and I think scripture shows plenty of evidence that, that the main purpose of fasting is to grow closer in relationship to God. And I want us all in this moment just to think to yourselves, am I starving for relationship with God? Am I as close to God as I think I am? Do I rely on God more than I do my own knowledge, things that I've learned, scriptures that I've read, lessons from other people, blogs, videos, messages? Do I rely on those things? Yesterday's experience with God, last week's experience with God, last month's experience with God, do I rely on that more than I do my current and personal relationship with God? Today's fresh word from God? I have really been challenged with this lately. You see, the reason why I'm so challenged with that is I read in scripture uh, uh, just the other day how Jesus was healing people long through the night. Infirmities, casting out demons, healing them of like affirmities, sicknesses, Tired, exhausted, goes to bed, wakes up in the morning, and you know what he does? He goes straight to see his father. First thing, straight to see his father. And I'm not talking like like I do sometimes. I hop out of bed and I go, good morning, Lord. I love you. I mean, I say a quick prayer and then off with my day. Sometimes I don't even hit my knees. I just kind of pray as I meander through my house looking for light switches, right? And and Jesus is here. I know he's gone for a while because his disciples wake up and they have to go find him. They, they wake up in these, in these couple moments in the Bible and they have to go find Jesus. And there he is with his father. And they approach Jesus and they say, hey, Jesus, hey, no, last night was crazy, right? That's exactly what they said too. It was crazy, right? People got healed. Man, we saw demons get cast out. Whoa, whoo, you were putting in some work, right? Hey, guess what? There's more people coming. More people are ready to receive from you, Jesus. More people ready to come and see the glory that you have for them, Jesus. You know what he says to me? He says, Hey guys, we gotta pack up and go. My father has a new mission for us today. More people need to hear about the word of God. And it made me think, like in that moment, Jesus, he's not doing what he did yesterday, relying on what God spoke to him yesterday. He's receiving from God right there in that moment, saying, God, what do you have for me today, Lord? Who is it, Lord? Where is it, God? Where are you moving? So not that that scripture that we have learned or messages that we learned, what God spoke to us yesterday isn't important, but where am I personally, Norman, where am I seeking God today now? Who, God? Who do you want me to speak to? So much of what Jesus did was amazing the night before, was it not? I mean, I would probably come to faith. I'd like to think I would come to faith in Christ by watching him heal people. So why not just keep doing that right where you're at? Call them to come see you, Lord. But no, he's sensitive and has this deep relationship with the Father. And I'm not, I can't say that Jesus was necessarily fasting in that moment, but he surely wasn't having oatmeal or eating breakfast. He was off praying with the Father, right? So he's first, most, is putting God before everything. And I wonder how much time I spend as a man who says he loves God and professes that he trusts God. How much do I, time do I actually spend doing that on this level? I'm not saying that, guys, that I'm like, I'm just up here talking like I have no experience of trusting God. Of course I trust God with some things. I do. But I'm really seeing a weakness in my walk here. And every single year, it's like I start something new, right? Like a workout program. Like, yeah, I'm going to get fit. Uh, by the way, I'm doing a cleanse right now. And, and so that's a reality for me, right? But how often does that peter off? And all of a sudden, next thing you know, pizza and ice cream, (laughs) all the yummy things. And I lose sight of it. And I know for a lot of us on our spiritual journeys, we start off the year with, as it's traditional us as churches, with like prayer and fasting. Let's, hey, let's pray and let's fast. And then it kind of just, the fasting thing just kind of, and our culture just goes away. And my heart for us as a church is that we yearn for more of that that we yearn to grow deeper and closer to a loving God with these so- beautiful songs that we just sing about how we want him to, uh, to be drawn closer to him. And this is an amazing way of foundation of our faith to be joined with God through fasting and prayer, to sacrificing something, to give up something that gets in the way. I have so many things that get in the way of my relationship to God. 
And my confession, my hope is for us as a church that we don't lose focus of it. For me, that I don't lose focus of it, that I grow. And as a church, I want us so bad to grow together. I wanted to tell you uh, just one last thing um, when it comes to just, just the amazingness of God through, through prayer and fasting and, and how he leads moment by moment. And I've shared, I've shared this. I, I, I don't know how else to do this um, simply because for me, again, like I don't have crazy stories day by day of God speaking to me personally in, a, in an, an amazing moment. But there's a story in Samuel where Samuel hears God speaking to him and he thinks it's his, his uncle, I believe is who it is. So he goes and he's, he, maybe it's his father, I don't know. Eli, is it Eli I think who it is? Eli, thank you, the priest. Eli, he goes, he hears of him speaking to him. He thinks, Eli, you called me. Nope, wasn't me, go back to bed. Three times he does that. Finally, Eli's like, it's God speaking to you. Next time. Say, here I am, Lord. And for me, I can definitely tell you I know that God has been trying to speak to me. But most of the time, I am too busy. I'm too, too much operating off what I think I know. And I got this. And I'm in control. And I'm going to resort to what I just learned or what I'm learning right now uh, through some type of study or something like that. I'm way too busy to actually hear God's voice. I'm not spending enough time fasting and praying. And that story just hits me. I want to be more like this. I've told this to you guys before, and it hits home because it's, it's, it's personal for me. But my mom passed, and a woman approached two of my sisters, and she did not know them at all. And she says, hey, this is crazy, right? Hi, how are you? Uh, hello? I want you to know that your mom right now is in Jesus' arms. She had just passed the night before. <laughs> when I look at that woman, I've never met her before, but I know she exists. I was just with my sister Kim last night who this was spoken to. And I'm so encouraged to know that God still speaks like that today, still. And how often is he speaking to us, church, about how to be sensitive to him? And I, I want to be more like that. I want to be that person who, who has the guts, <laughs> who sp first invested time with God, right? Because obviously there's giftings, right? I'm not saying that all of us should just, all oh, going to have this crazy ability to do that everywhere we go. But I believe God still has that for us. Think about the account for those of us who love to read the Bible and stand on God's word, right? Think about the account of Nathaniel, no, Philip, sorry, and the eunuch. Where Philip inspired by the Holy Spirit, hears him speak to him. Hey, Philip, go over here. And Philip is like, okay. He tells him to go to a street, <laughs> right? No more instructions, just go over here, okay. Hey, Philip, next thing he says to him, you see that guy coming down the street? Go talk to him. Now, this is a, a, a eunuch, right, who's traveling, and Philip speaks to him and says, what are you reading? And he says, reading out of this book. I don't know what it means. I just, I'm reading from it. I, I want to know what it, what it means, so he explains it to him, and this man comes to end up knowing Jesus in a relationship, gets baptized, and, and then probably goes to his providence and changes his whole providence because he knows a relationship with Jesus now. And it was because Philip was so in tune with God and because God was working in the heart of the, of the eunuch. And so my question is, in, 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 in ending here, is how are we willing to rely on God to move in our hearts to give us something fresh today? Church, I, wanna, I want us to be thinking about that as we move this week, as we, as we move through our lives this week. Um, and the question I have, or the, the, the question you may have, is where do we start? Where do we start? How do we start to do this, and how do we, 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 we carry it? And I want to say is, I want us to, to all to take a step in fasting this week. I want us to all take a step, a, a huge step of faith, and try it. Try to fast if you haven't. If you have before, try it again. So what, what do we fast? What is it that we fast, you ask? Well, I mean, for, traditionally, for most of us, it's, we've fasted food, right? Not fast food. We fast food. We don't, we don't eat fast food. That's not the way to do it. But we fast food, so we, we restrain from eating food. For some of us, you might be brave enough to, do, to, 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 to let go of social media. 
When some people will say, well, maybe, maybe that's not the old proper way of fasting. But here's what I want to ask you is, if you're brave enough to do social media and you're a person who's on social media or not, every time that you, you want to go to social media, you got to pray. <laughs> so that's actually a big step, right? It's a huge step. But the point is, is to remove something or sacrifice something that either distracts you or that you're normally dependent on and turn to God instead. So I want to call us to that this week. For you, it could be anything. For you, it could be uh, food. It could be a meal. Uh, for you, you, you know, you can sacrifice more. Say, hey, I'm going to take a whole day and I'm not going to eat. And kudos to you. But here's what I don't want us to do. I don't want us to compare to each other what we're doing. What I want this to be, church, is for us to make it personal with God. Make it personal with God. This God wants to draw close to you and he knows who you are. He knows the sacrifice you're gonna make. So whatever it is, start there. Start small if you have to and just remove something and dedicate that time to God. Pray to him, speak to him, ask him to speak to you and ask him if you have a hard time hearing him like I do. God, would you give me ears to hear you, Lord? I'm seeking you. I, am, I see that there's power in prayer and fasting and I, I need you. I need you. I want to be closer to you. That's what I'm going to call us to do this week. So whatever it is that you're going, to, you're going to sacrifice, please sacrifice. And when you do, give your best to God. Give your heart to him. Rely on him to speak to you. And I want us to be a church who learns to rely on God's power for everything. I believe that God will move strong through us as a church. He will grow us closer together as a church with him and each other. We have this huge mission, right? To love God, love people, and make disciples. And, and a lot of this we try to do through methods. We've done that historically through methods. But I want to challenge this as a church, not to drop methods, not to drop teaching, not to drop scripture, but again, let's do like some of these wonderful people in scripture have showed us, to put him first in fasting and prayer. Then do those things. Let's fast this week and pray this week and ask God, God, who? Who is it that you want me to speak to? God, who around me, God? Who in my family, or even more courageous, who is it that I don't know, God, that you want me to speak to? And maybe he won't give us a person right away, but I guarantee you, if we seek and we pray and we earnestly do this with all of our heart and with the right pure motive to draw closer to him and to be with him, he will start to reveal these amazing people to us. He will start to bring healing to our city. He will start to bring healing to people physically. We've already seen him start to do that in small pockets and small areas. And I just want to challenge this church to continue to grow in our fervent search of God through prayer and fasting this week. Join with us on that. And let's start this week. And let's continue it throughout the rest of the year. I want to ask the, the worship team to come forward right now. And we're going, to, we're going to have a moment really quick here where we're going to, we're going to pray together. Now, for, for some of us who uh, have been praying through the weekly prayer guide that was sent out uh, through an email and a couple, I think another uh, piece of communication all week, we've been uh, posting it on Facebook through the church We've been in a week of prayer, and today we are in day seven, if you've been following along. And there's, there's an acronym of, of PRAY. So we're going we're gonna to do day seven today, and there's a few different pieces uh, that we're going to walk through in this acronym of prayer. Today, we're going to be praying for our city, our nation, and the world today. So here's what I'm asking right now, is if in this moment, if we would be willing to just take the time to either pray with me as I lead us in prayer, or right where you're sitting with your family and friends, maybe you want to pray together your own prayer. But either way, I want us to, to engage together. Let's go to our creator. Let's ask him to move. The first, the first one is P and pray, and that's praise God for his power. Oh Lord, King of the universe, our God. God, we praise you for your power. God, your craftsmanship is displayed in the world that we live in, the universe that we live in, God. God, we see your power, your mighty hand. God, how we're thankful, God, for the power that you display. Oh God, how we're thankful that we know we can turn to you, God. Now you have all things in your hands, God. You made and you sustain things. How glorious, Lord, you are. God, we acknowledge you in your power and your craftsmanship. We're now gonna recognize the gifts that he gives. God, the, the wonder 
and the amazingness of the gift of your creation. Man, when I think about <laughs> looking up into the stars or the blinding sun, the warm sun in my face, or the snow outside, the freezing snow, <laughs> the power that it holds, so much joy that comes from it, kids playing in it, the resetting of a season, it's a gift. God, the people, the people you've made, God, they're a gift. God, your son, although he wasn't created, <laughs> is a gift. God, you're amazing in all that you give. Thank you, God, for being such a good and giving God. I'm gonna ask for forgiveness when we've forgotten to pray for those who don't know Jesus around the world. God, would you forgive me? Would you forgive us as a people today? God, for not praying for those around the world who need you, for not praying for each other, God, to be strengthened on the mission that you've given us. God, for those who are persecuted around the world, God, who are challenged day by day just for, for sharing the goodness of who you are, as crazy as that sounds to us sometimes, it's real. God, forgive us for not being more attentive to, to seeking you through prayer, God. God, forgive us for putting the cart before the horse, really, God, for doing your work instead of seeking you, Lord. God, for, forgive me, God, for not trusting in the power of fasting and prayer more. God, for identifying my own weakness, God, and not not being on my knees more dependent on you, God. Needing you, showing that I need you, displaying it. God, like, like so many before me, God, just crying out to you, God, in utter dependence, thinking that I could accomplish something, patting myself on the back even at times, God. Forgive me, Lord. Who am I? God, it is you we need. Forgive us, God. Forgive us. God, we're going to cast our, our request to you now. God, in that spot of humility of just asking for forgiveness, I know you still want to use us. We're not perfect. We're not a perfect people, but it's by your grace. So God, would you continue to well in us? God, a, a heart posture that continues to seek you and empowers us, God, to just reach your world together. God, to make a difference, God. We started out, you know, it was simple, just, just praising you and, and then moving on this week to, to, to family members and, and neighbors and, and our church and so on and, and now the world. And so, God, we know you want to use us in all these areas of our lives. God, would you use us, God, to, to miraculously change the world through our connection to you, God? God, it's an honor. To, to be seen as someone who you want to use. God, thank you so much for, for not counting me as a lost, even though I'm rebellious in so many ways and picking me back up and say, son, I have so much for you to do. Be encouraged, young man. Get up, pray fast, seek my kingdom, love others, show them well what it means to know, to know me. Draw them, use, let me use you as a tool to draw them into my kingdom. God, thank you so much. God, will we be encouraged to be those people? God, we love you. We need you, Lord. God, would you help us to have a life that reflects that more and more, day by day, week by week, throughout the months and years of this year, to be a church, God, who radically reaches the world for you. God, we love you. We thank you, God. We praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Church, I just want to uh, briefly... Um, before we enter into more worship and singing, I just want to say this prayer guide, we used it this week. I want to encourage you to use it again if you need to, but just whatever you do, whether it's another resource, don't stop praying. Don't stop seeking God. I want to encourage you to do so. And then please dedicate fasting this week. Give it a try. If you need to, to connect somebody with somebody here for more ideas, uh, you have lots of friends in the room, but obviously people you know, I want us to all connect together online. Uh, if you need, uh, please uh, type in, uh, ask, ask questions. How do I fast? Ask for encouragement. Um, I, I just pray that we take time this week to step into that realm of fasting. Watch God move in our hearts, drawing us closer to Him and changing the world. And lastly, um, 
If you're here today, if you're here today and God is speaking to you and you wanna draw closer to God, you're saying, hey, I wanna take a step. I need to draw closer to him. And two, there are a couple ways I'm gonna invite you to do that. One is, is by accepting Jesus into your heart. If God is speaking to you and you say, hey, I want to grow closer to God. I wanna be in closer relationship with God. I wanna know this God. It's easy for you to do. It's really to just admit the fact that you've sinned, that you're a sinner, that you need God's grace in your life and to put your faith and trust in Jesus. You see, Jesus came for us all. Jesus came uh, to, to to relieve us of our sins, to pay the debt of our sins. We're all in debt, we're all separated because we rebel against God. We tell God, hey, I am king, I know what's best, I know what to do. And because of that rebellion, that, that, that admission that I'm God, you're not, he, we're separated, it's called sin. But God, who's rich in mercy and grace, he has forgiven us by sending his son Jesus to die on the cross, pay our penalty of our sins. That if we put our faith in him, not in what we do, not in our good works, but our faith in him, he is just to forgive us. And our, our next step is baptism. We have a tank right here full of water. If that's your next step today, it's a symbol of what's going on in your heart. You simply take a step, we come, we put you in the water. It's a symbol of your, your death, your dying, and you're raised up to new life today. And we celebrate that as a church in heaven that rejoices uh, with us that, hey, someone else has now entered the kingdom. They've taken a step toward God. If that's your step today, we want to help you take that. If that's, if that's your step, we want to ask you to come to the back. When worship start, starts, just please come to the back, talk to me. I'll help you to take that next step with Jesus. And then for the rest of us, if you just need prayer, if you just, you know what? Hey, I need prayer. I'm struggling with this concept of fasting and prayer. Could you pray for me and with me? Or, hey, God is speaking something to my heart right now. I need prayer. Turn to someone in the room, someone that you know, someone that you've been praying with before. Take a step and receive prayer for them. Or come to the back. Mike and I will be back there to pray with you. Either way, just take a step and respond to Jesus. So we're going to go ahead and worship. Please stand. Let's worship our King, our loving God together. And if you need prayer or you need baptism, please come to the back and see us.